Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Rami. And today's video is going to be a video I've been wanting to do for quite a while. Um, ever since I did my postpartum video, if you guys haven't seen that, check it out. It was my postpartum vlog that I did at the hospital um, where I showed you guys a bedside report for a typical postpartum patient. It obviously wasn't a real patient, but I did a little fake patient scenario that you guys really loved. A lot of you guys said that you learned from it. Some of you guys are techs and you guys said that now you kind of understand what the nurses are saying at the hospital. So I thought it would be an awesome idea to do a few more of those, but a labor and delivery version, a antepartum version, and a women's oncology version. So on our unit, we typically take care of all of those patients on our high-risk antepartum, OB-GYN, oncology unit. If you guys want to know who exactly I take care of on my unit, check out my description below. I just updated it. But I'm just going to be going over a few patient scenarios. Obviously, they are fake. Disclaimer right here. Y'all know about HIPAA. So um, I decided to make three patient scenarios. And usually whenever we do bedside report, we say a lot less words I'm going to say. But I'm going to add in a few descriptions, a few small descriptions just to kind of help you guys understand what's going on. But I mostly wrote out what we kind of say at the bedside when we are doing our patient handoff from nurse to nurse after each shift. So I hope you guys enjoy. Please leave me a comment if you have any questions, but I'm gonna do my best and kind of have little words over the screen on other things to help you guys kind of understand what's going on a little bit better, but I hope you guys enjoy. So this is a typical handoff sheet that we use on our unit. Most units have these kind of reports or they have something similar to it. But since we are an OB-GYN women's floor, we have things like EBL, which is the estimated blood loss. On our unit, we actually use a QBO, which is a quantified blood loss, which is the exact amount of blood they lost instead of an estimated. We used to use these back when I started. If they have any kind of incisions, um, flu and Tdap are very important for women's health. Um, we always have the H and H written down, which is a hemoglobin and hematocrit to see their pre H and H before they deliver and post H and H, which is after they deliver. We always want to know the platelets and any infectious diseases they have and their group B streptococcus, which is important um, to know about if they are laboring because they will need penicillin or something similar if they're allergic to penicillin while they are delivering. So the baby doesn't have any kind of infection as the baby is coming out. Um, so this is kind of just what it looks like. We have three in the front and three in the back in case we have like four or five patients for the day. Um, but yeah, this is kind of what we use. This is what we're going to use for our three patients we're getting today. So stay tuned. So let's get started. In room one, we have Miss Jones. She is 60 years old and she is here for pain control. She is on a 2200 carb control diet because she is a type two diabetic. Her AccuChecks are ACHS. She's allergic to shellfish and penicillin, and she needs help going to the bathroom because she has generalized weakness from her chemo and radiation, so we have provided her with a walker, but she knows to call if she feels dizzy at all. Her main doctor is Dr. Smith, and she is on the women's oncology team. So Miss Jones is here today because she has stage 2 cervical cancer, and about a month ago, she finished her third treatment of chemo and radiation. She had a lot of nausea and vomiting after that third cycle, so she did not come back for her fourth treatment and presents today with pain related to her cancer. It is mostly in her abdomen and radiates to her back, so we have her on a multimodal pain regimen that we'll discuss in just a second. Her veins are extremely small from the radiation, so we didn't even try to do a peripheral IV on her. We just accessed her port on her right chest. She has normal saline running at 75 mils per hour through her port. Her other pertinent medical history is chronic hypertension and she takes Norvasc daily. Her blood sugars have been within normal limits, so she hasn't needed the sliding scale insulin the doctors ordered PRN. But she does take metformin two times daily with breakfast and dinner. Her white count is 4, H&H &H is 11 and 32, platelets 450. She is a negative blood type. So let's go over her multimodal pain regimen. She gets gabapentin for nerve pain every 8 hours, so you'll give it at 2200 and 6 a.m. She gets ketamine IV, Q4 hours, and I last gave it to her at 1700, so you'll give it next at 2100 and Q4 hours from then on. 
She gets PO Flexoril as a muscle relaxer, Q8 hours, and her next dose is due at 3 a.m. For breakthrough pain, the doctors ordered Norco 10, Q6 hours, PRN, and for severe pain, morphine, 2 milligrams, Q4 hours, PRN. So far, Ms. Jones says that her pain has been adequately controlled, so we're hoping for a short stay for her so she can go home and get her fourth dose of chemo and radiation at the clinic. And that is the finished report sheet for Ms. Jones. So in room two, we have Miss Garcia. She is 25 years old and she is here for P-Prom. She has no allergies. She is 32 weeks and four days today, a G3, P2, and is a gestational A1 diabetic. So her checks are fasting and two hours postprandial. She is up at lib. She has no allergies and she is on a 2200 carb controlled diet. Her OB doctor is Dr. Williams and she is on the OB team. So she ruptured clear on the 1st of June when she got up to the bathroom and she noticed a gush of fluid. When she came to us, they tested her and her amnesia was positive and she had positive ferning as well. So she is status post beta methasone times two and antibiotics. She wasn't contracting at all when she came in and she currently reports no contractions and she's had no vaginal bleeding so far. She does report slight leaking whenever she wipes in the bathroom, but it has been clear. She knows to call if she sees green or yellow leaking, bleeding, or contractions. So far, she has been a febra, which is great. Her baby is BID fetal monitoring for 30 minutes Q shift. So far, baby has been cat one, but sometimes she's been cat two due to variables. She last had a sono done yesterday and the BPP was eight out of eight and her AFI was 10. She is a prior times two, so they plan on doing a repeat C-section at 34 weeks on her, but otherwise she'll be hanging out with us for the next two weeks. She has had no complaints so far and is a super sweet patient. You'll love her. We have a left IDC on her that is saline locked. Her blood type is O positive and her type in screen is current. Her current H&H &H is 12 and 34 and platelets are 300. White count is nine. All her infectious diseases are negative and she is rubella immune. She is also GBS negative. She has no medication due tonight, just her prenatal vitamin in the morning. You'll have a wonderful night with her. In room three, we have Miss Miller. She is 28 years old here in active labor. She doesn't want an epidural and does not have one. She wants to go all natural, so no pain medications for her. She is 38 weeks, two days, a G8, P6, A1, no allergies. Her first baby, she had an epidural, but the rest have been all natural, so she has done this before like a champ. She's on a clear liquid diet and up at lib, but is currently on continuous monitoring. She's on the OB team with her doctor being Dr. Rodriguez. She ruptured meconium this morning at home, and she has been contracting every three to four hours since. When she first got here, her check was six, 100%, and a minus two. But right before you got here, she started feeling lots of pressure, so I just rechecked her, and she was eight, 100% and minus one. So I think she'll be having a baby real soon for you. Her infectious diseases were negative, rubella immune, and she is GBS positive. Last dose of penicillin was given an hour ago at 1800. And if she doesn't deliver in the next three hours, which I'm sure she will, you'll give another dose at 2200. Her current H&H &H is 9 and 29. And since she is a grand multip, we have two units of blood on hold in case she has a postpartum hemorrhage, since she is at high risk for that. Other pertinent medical history is her last baby was a 30-second shoulder dystocia and was 10 pounds, but she was a gestational diabetic at the time. This pregnancy, she passed her GTT, so no diabetes. Also, her baby has measured at about 7 pounds, so this one's a lot smaller. All prior pregnancies were vaginal. NICU is on standby due to meconium, but her baby has been cat one so far with maybe one or two variables. She has a right form saline locked, but I just saw an order that the doctor put in for lactated ringers at 125 mils per hour. I'll start right before I leave. She's going to be in awesome hands tonight. So I hope that helped you guys in getting report. I hope this helps you understand if you guys are a nursing student doing a women's rotation or an oncology rotation, a little bit more of what is going on. I know as a nursing student, I usually just wrote down what I could on a blank sheet of paper while the nurses did handoff, um, but it was really difficult for me to understand. And it definitely takes a while if you are a new nurse or a new grad to get the hang of bedside report and kind of like the lingo and how to 
shorten your words when you're writing down report just to make it easier for you, for you to understand and take report a lot faster because report goes super fast. But I hope this video helped you guys. Leave me a comment if you guys have any questions and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye.